turn with me this morning uh, to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, and as I said earlier, I just get excited when it comes to dining from the word of the Lord. Because God's word is his way of him speaking to us. And it's important that we tune our minds in a spiritual way, that we might hear his voice. Because there are many voices, but there is only one voice from heaven. And saints, I would like to begin in chapter 24, 34, 34. And you will find these recorded words beginning at verse 23. That is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. And I'd like you to follow along with me beginning at verse 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them. He shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them. And he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods." And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. Saints, say a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. Let the church say amen. amen. Turn to the book of St. John. The book of St. John. And we'll begin at verse number 14 of chapter 10. Chapter 10 of the book of St. John. And I would like for you to follow along with me beginning at verse 14 of chapter 10. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Let the church say amen. amen. We see a connection here between the book of Ezekiel and the book of St. John. And that connection is the one shepherd. Turn with me to the book of Psalms. Psalms 23. The book of Psalms. Psalms 23. And we're going to read these first six verses together. And as you read these verses, saints, make it personal. Make it personal. David, as he wrote these words, these words were personal to him. And he knew what his valley experience was. And only you know what your valley experience is. But God must become your shepherd. So let us read these first six verses together. The Psalms 23. Everyone have it. Say amen. amen. Let's dine together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me 
in the presence of mine enemies, thy anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. I praise God. I thank God. Saints, the message this morning is the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And I want to personalize it. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me. Jesus is my shepherd. Jesus is my shepherd. My God, he's a good God, saints. There is only one shepherd. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same shepherd that was, the shep was David shepherd. That same shepherd is available today. But you must make him your personal shepherd. Hallelujah. The one shepherd has one name. His name is Jesus. And there's something about the name of Jesus that brings peace to my soul. Brings joy to my heart. And as David began to write these words, you can just see the excitement. You can see the enthusiasm. You can see the love that he had for his one shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't need anything else. Hallelujah. I shall not want. Oh, my God. He will supply all of your needs. Everything that we need, we must receive it from the one shepherd. There are many joys in our world, but my shepherd becomes my joy. There are many things that can bring peace to your heart. But my shepherd brings me peace. He maketh me the lie down in green pastures. Does not mean he forces us to do anything. But he provides a place where we can die sufficiently. For sheep, they dine and graze off of green pastures. Our God, he provides a way by which we can be fed and nourished in a spiritual way. But yet, he provides the food we have to make ourselves available to be fed by God. This is what it means by you making Jesus your shepherd. He will lead, he will feed, but we have to follow and put a, ourselves in a place where we can hear his voice. He restoreth my soul. There are times when, oh, I'm broken. I'm weak, but God is able to restore. He's able to put back the pieces that have Falling apart. I'm glad that I can come to my shepherd for whatever need that I have, and I'm going to leave the same way I came. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. We sing a song, Lord, keep me in your pathway. This flesh will lead you away from the pathway of God. But God has a way of keeping us in the right pathway. Keeping us in a pathway that is directed toward him and not away from him. He will lead us, but do you have a desire to follow? He is my shepherd. When you walk through your valley, <laughs> because there's going to be some valley time. There's going to be some dark times. There's going to be some times where things just don't go your way. But my shepherd, he's right there. 
You can look back and see the many times that God, he showed up when you needed him the most. Jesus has proven himself to be a good shepherd. He's a faithful shepherd. He cares for not only our physical well-being, but our spiritual well-being. Thank God for his rod. Because not only does his rod bring comfort, it brings correction. A shepherd's rod has a hook that it is used to grab a hold of the sheep and get it back in line, put it, pull, pull it out of harm's way. Don't despise the correcting of the Lord. It is his love trying to pull you back into the path of righteousness. He's trying to pull you back into the green pastures. Hallelujah. The Lord, he said, that same rod is able to comfort. The loving arms of God, you can feel his love. He's invisible. He's a spirit. But yet, I know he's real because I can feel him. And I praise the Lord that whenever we need, there's a table. <laughs> and only he prepares it. Glory to God. And even in the midst of our enemies, the enemies can't stop the table. Hallelujah. And don't you let the enemy stop you from getting to the table. But this is where your strength is. This is where your nourishment comes from. The enemy knows how much of a blessing it is to feed from God's word. So he would do all he can to try to stop you from getting to a place where you can be fed. And you can have your soul to be filled up with the truth of his word. Lord, there are going to be times where we need some healing. These bodies just don't want to cooperate. This is where, back in this time, they used to use an anointing oil as a balm to be applied to a womb. Hallelujah. That healing might come. Well, the Lord, he is my anointing. He is, his, his very presence brings healing. Not only healing for the body, but healing for the soul. Lord, fill my cup. Let it runneth over. I praise God that as David began to write these words, he, a man, experienced God as being his shepherd. And he knew that it was not just God being a present help, but God, he is our hope. For David said, surely all the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Amen. We are looking forward to seeing our shepherd, his face in peace. Because he's coming back and returning for his sheep. He is the good shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep. He is the great shepherd that cares for his sheep. He's also the chief shepherd. He's returning for his sheep. And I want us as saints of God to appreciate, appreciate that God has allowed you to become a part of his fold. Because the Lord, he referenced the children of Israel as being in a covenant relationship with him. And they are his sheep by covenant. But Jesus said that I have other sheep that are yet not of this fold. And he said that 
there's going to be one fold, not two fold. One fold, that one fold is the church. Not church buildings, not church organizations. But there is one shepherd. There's one fold. There's one Lord. There's one faith. There's one baptism. There's one God who is the father of all and above all and through all and in you all. There's one spirit, that's the Holy Ghost. And there's one way to be baptized in to his fold. And that's by the one spirit. And so it's not about joining membership with or affiliating yourself with a building or organization. But we must make sure that we are a part of that one fold. Because that is where the shepherd is providing for his sheep. And God, he began to use this illustration, hallelujah, of a shepherd and a sheep, and he compared it to his relationship with Christ and the church. And he began to say that there is one door. There's only one way to enter into a right relationship with the one shepherd. Jesus said, I'm the door. If you want to enter into my fold, which is my body or my church, you have to come in one way. And Jesus, he established that way on the day of Pentecost. Oh, he's a good God. Well, there are other shepherds. But yet, God said that when you know the good shepherd, when he calls your name, you're going to recognize his voice. A stranger. We must not follow. Because there are many strange voices. And these were shepherds whereby God was not pleased with. But the Lord said, when my sheep hear my voice, they will follow me. Hallelujah. See, our job as sheep is to get to that place where you can hear the voice of God. His voice is his word. And God, he speaks by his word and he speaks by his spirit. And so we must know the word in order to know the right voice. Because the Lord, he began to say, when those that hear his voice, they're going to follow. Lord, help me to be a better follower of your word, of your voice. God, let us know the shepherds have a responsibility as well as the sheep. And a stranger, they will not follow, he said, because they don't know the voice of strangers. We teach our children not to follow after strangers. We teach them stranger danger. If we're not familiar with people or we don't know who they are, then we must be leery and not allow our children to follow after them. Children are vulnerable. Hallelujah, they see something they like, some candy, and they will follow blindly. And we have to know, unfortunately, in our world that there are predators out there. Hallelujah. That prey upon those that are innocent. They prey on those that are naive. But what God is saying, that when you know the right voice, you won't follow the wrong voice. Hallelujah. Us as kids playing in the street, we could be plain and if our parents call our name, we, we, we recognize that voice. Hallelujah. 
See, when another parent calls, we may not respond, but we know the voice of those that we're familiar with. Well, God, he speaks by his word. And when we get this word in our heart, saints, there's a connection. When his word is falling on good ground. My God, you can rejoice and find strength from the word when you agree with it. I want you to learn, saints, how to draw strength from the word. Hallelujah. See, we don't want our coming to be in vain, but that which we receive from God, we want to benefit from. And God, he has a way of not only building us up in a spiritual way, but encouraging our soul. God, he said, not only am I the shepherd, but I'm the door as well. And if you want to enter into a, a right relationship with me, then you can only come by the door. Now, there are many that may try to enter in by other means. And God, he called them thieves and, and robbers. Because why? They're stealing the glory of God for their own benefit, for their own gain. Well, God goes on to say that there are some that are called hirelings. And they are not shepherds. But they proclaim to be keepers or responsible for sheep. And... The problem is that they, they are motivated by money. And they necessarily don't care for the sheep and they're not looking out for the sheep's best interest. And so they, they neglect the sheep and they leave the sheep vulnerable for the wolf. In other words, we have to understand there's an enemy. It's a spiritual enemy. Hallelujah. And his desire that he's looking to steal, kill, and destroy souls. His prey is souls. And he wants, he don't want men and women to get to know God the right way. And so he will do all he can to, glory God, steer the sheep in a different direction, away from the door. These are hirelings, or they're, they're false shepherds. For the devil, he is a counterfeiter. And see, he has false shepherds that say they represent God. And we, as God's sheep, we have to know the difference between God's voice and a stranger's voice. God's voice will always lead you into a closer walk with him. God's voice will always lead you away from sin and worldliness. And you must know that God's voice, you can feel his voice. Because when his voice, under shepherd is speaking a word by the power of God. God is speaking. And you thank him, saints, to be in a place where you can hear God's voice. The wolf is coming. Hallelujah. God warned by this passage of scripture. And the good shepherd is trying to protect the sheep from the wolf. And not leave the sheep vulnerable. Because when the sheep is neglected and not equipped with the word of God, they become vulnerable. And they can be persuaded by any voice. Well, the Lord, he began to say that once the wolf comes, hallelujah, the sheep are scattered. And they go in directions that are contrary to the way of God. I want you to see, want you to see how important it is for us as sheep that once God puts you in the one fold, you got to stay in that fold. You 
Because that wolf, he wants to pull you out. Hallelujah. Of the one fold. Now, he can't force you out, but sheep have a way of wandering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sheep, amen, they need direction. They need guidance. And we have to know that we have to depend on our shepherd. Don't think that we can survive on our own. Once we feel as if we can make it on our own, we become vulnerable. That's the relationship. The relationship is a dependency. Many don't like to depend on what they can't see. But yet, in order for us to remain in the fold of God and to hear his voice when he calls your name, we have to learn to depend on God's leading and his guidance. Well, here, God, he was not happy with some that were supposed to or given the responsibility to shepherd his sheep. Why? Because they had neglected the sheep and they had caused the sheep to become sick. They stopped feeding the sheep or stop feeding the flock and they were feeding themselves. In other words, they were taking advantage of the sheep. In Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 4 says, the diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And we, we can see that God was not happy with the way these shepherds were treating his sheep. Because God was saying, I will not treat them that way. And so it behooves us as servants of God to know that there is a need and we have to know there's a spiritual need. There's a spiritual sickness that must be healed. And as a shepherd of God, a servant of God, it's important that we provide an atmosphere whereby healing can come. Healing for our soul. When you come to the house of God, you must know that God, he's able to heal my soul. He's able to bound, bind up that which is broken. He's able, saints of God, to heal that which is sick. I'm glad I come with the approach, I'm not leaving here the same way I came. There's something, something that I need fixed and only God can fix it. And God was not happy because these shepherds, they neglected the sheep. They looked to exploit the sheep. They were looking to get all they can from the sheep, but not give in return. And Jesus has already said, I did not come right, to take from the sheep. I come to give, give my life. There's a sacrifice that God was looking for and he did not see from these shepherds. It's a dangerous thing when we make, when I say we, servants, those that say they represent God, money becomes their God. And when one is not concerned about one's spiritual well-being, but yet concerned about their status in the financial world. Hallelujah. God, he does not care about your money, but he cares about your soul. And you must also care about your soul more so than anything else. See, when you come to the house of God, look, you want your soul. Lord, bless my soul. God said, I have showers of blessings. It's not money, cars, and land. <laughs> oh, but there's a spiritual blessing. 
there's an anointing that comes from God. I can feel his presence right now. Hallelujah. Shower down your blessings on me, Lord. Oh, just open up your heart. Yeah, let the presence of God move. Hallelujah. His presence will bring healing. Hallelujah. I praise him. He's a blesser of my soul. And I thank him when you can rejoice right in your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to run all the way around the church. Oh, to shout, but I can rejoice right now in my soul. He's my shepherd. Hallelujah. Don't need the choir. Don't need the organ. Jesus is my joy. My God, this is what I'm talking about. Jesus becoming your shepherd, your personal shepherd. He's more, he's more than just, Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. I thank him for the intimacy, the relationship, holiday, the guidance that my shepherd provides. Well, God, because of the neglect of God's flock, the sheep had scattered. And they began to wander away from God. And now, it's important that we receive guidance from the Lord. And God, he was holding these shepherds accountable because we have to know, we have to receive guidance from God. But these shepherds were not providing guidance. And so they were going to be held accountable for all those souls that they misguided. All those souls by which they did not tell the truth. And it, it, the blood was going to be required at their hand. It's a great responsibility. If you desire to, oh Lord God, and it's not anything you desire. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, he has the final say. He has the only say. And you thank God it's not something you can just pick or choose. It's not like a job, like the secular. But God, he chooses you. And God picks you. And so, because of their neglect, and this flock was scattered, they had no shepherd, they became prey. They became vulnerable. And we have to know that when God brings you out of your mess, hallelujah, he brings you out of sin, out of the world, Glory to God, he don't want you to go back. But if you're not satisfied with the one shepherd, you become vulnerable. You become prey. You become meat for the wolf. And he's looking for every opportunity to feed you because you're not satisfied with what God is feeding you. My Lord, I hope you get this message, saints. You have to become satisfied with his word. Satisfied with his way. And know that his way is the only way that's going to lead you. Hallelujah to an eternal walk with God. Well, God, he began to say that I have sheep all over this world. Hallelujah. And I laid down my life for the world. And those that desire to become my sheep all I require of you is that you come through the door. If you come through the door, you shall be saved. Well, the only way we can be saved and set free from the bondage of sin or the power of sin is by a greater power. Oh, Lord, and that power must come from above. It's the Holy Ghost power that Jesus had to send it was the rod that comforts but Jesus said I have to go away first I have to first do what I come to do and that was to lay down my life I had to shed my blood hallelujah to let the world know that I love you 
And I'm going to sacrifice my life just for you. Jesus did not just say I'm the shepherd. He proved it by his actions. And he hung on that cross. And he let the disciples know you're going to scatter like sheep. But I got to do this alone. No one can help me. I have to sacrifice my body for all of mankind. Oh, I'm talking about the shepherd. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. He had to show the whole world that what love was. This was a sacrificial love. It's not what I can get from you, but what can I do for you? This is Jesus. What can I do for you? I'm going to lay down my life, Lord, and pick it up again. And when Jesus rose on the third day, my God, he rose with all power. And he defeated the one enemy, the wolf, oh, which is death. Oh, Lord, today that wolf is lurking. Uh, My God, there's no one exempt from death. But yet... By the grace of God, we're still here today. It's by his mercy that he has allowed you to walk through those doors. Because there's nothing good that we did. You ought to praise God. You ought to thank God. He's given me more time to enter into his fold. Because Jesus is coming back as the chief shepherd. He's coming back for his flock that is scattered all throughout this world, but yet there is one fold. Hallelujah. And when Jesus sees fit, oh Lord, there's going to be a a roll call. Glory to God, he's going to call his church by name. He's going to call his sheep by name. And you want to be somewhere in Jesus. I said, somewhere in Jesus, whereby you can hear the name of God. You can hear your name called. He's a good God, saints. And when God, he's given us more time right now. As we sit here and learn from his word, we must make sure that Jesus is in my house not just around me but he in me his presence is his peace he is our Jehovah Shammah the Lord is present amen and God made a way by which he can be present in your house there's waters by which God has allowed his sheep to drink from it's still waters it's a living water and he said I'm going to be in you a well of water springing up unto everlasting life that water is the Holy Ghost are you drinking from the waters of God because they are available but God won't force you I'm glad any time of the day I can get a drink from my shepherd I can go to my well and yet be refreshed uh, by the spirit of God uh, whereby I can be uh, on the job uh, driving in my car uh, oh in the doctor's office uh, yet uh, all I gotta do uh, is call the shepherd uh, by his name uh, and when I call Jesus uh, yes Lord uh, my soul uh, begins to rejoice my cup 
He's filling my cup. Lord, keep on filling it till it runneth over. And when your cup runneth over with the goodness of God, you just can't hold it in. But yet let God be praised. Let God have his way. These old bodies of ours can't move like we used to move. But when Jesus moved in your soul, you got to move. You let God be praised. Don't quench the spirit, but let the waters of God flow freely. Run from heart to heart. And breast to breast. Hallelujah. This is the good shepherd. Blessings. Showering. Showers of blessings. In my soul today. He's a good God. And when Jesus said. It's enough. It is finished. He laid down his life. They didn't kill him. But he laid it down. Just for a moment. Just for three days. And he picked it up again. And when he rose, I said, he's alive. Because I can feel him in my soul. He's not dead. He's not on the cross. He's not in the grave. But he's alive in my soul. And I thank God when the Holy Ghost get a hold of you. You begin to rejoice and praise God. And the Holy Ghost. Ghost, I say preach on because my word is a shower of blessings in your soul. It's healing for my soul. It's healing for my body. I don't know what God is doing, but say, Lord, have your way. Lord, touch right now while you're rejoicing in Jesus. He's touching you. He's healing you. He's blessing you right now that we serve right now, God. You may wonder why you can't rejoice like others can, but make them personal to you. Think of what God has already done. Think of where he brought you from and something something should move in your soul I was on the outside but my Jesus my shepherd he brought me in where I could be close to my Lord he's a good God and when the wolf is lurking trying to steal and destroy your mind. You stand up and say the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I am satisfied with Jesus. He's everything that I want. He's more than I need. You can have the whole world. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. He's my shepherd. Woo! You gotta know this for yourself. You gotta know the shepherd is coming back for his fold. He got a fold. He got a fold. Are you in the fold? I didn't say in the building. I said in the fold. In the church. In the body of Christ. You better make your calling and election sure. You got to know this for yourself. Not what somebody else told you. But you got to make sure that you enter into the door. The same way everybody else entered in. As it was on the day of Pentecost. That's 
when the door was open. That's when the door was open. <laughs> the door is still open today. Oh, it's up to you to come on in. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Because that's the name of the shepherd. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's the door. That's the door. That's the door. Aren't you glad you entered in? <laughs> Woo! And once you came in, my God, God said, look at all I have for you. Mm, you can die sufficiently. I'm going to provide pasture. I'm going to provide water. I'm going to provide protection. But all you have to do is keep on feeding. Hallelujah. Let God lead you. Continue to follow. Hallelujah. To stay in the good pasture that God has provided. I thank him, saying Sometimes God has to send a word to show us how blessed we are. And we ought to appreciate God being our shepherd. He cares for us. And he put those that love God that will care for you not only in a physical way, but more so in a spiritual way. They will speak God's word as God speak. Because those strangers, those hirelings will tell you what you want to hear. But the shepherd will tell you what you need to hear. The shepherd of God, he has the hook. <laughs> oh, and that hook... When the sheep see that hook, they don't, they don't, they, they, they smart now. They don't want nothing to do with the hook. <laughs> they trying to duck out of it. See, but a good shepherd will know how to wrangle them up. <laughs> uh, see, we're going to need that hook. Hook will pull you out of trouble. Come time to be getting mess. Hallelujah. That only God can bring you out of. When you when he bring you out, don't go back into the mess. Hallelujah. Give God praise. God bring you out to stay out. And learn from our mistakes. Hallelujah. He bring us out of situations that are beyond our control or ability. Whether it be sickness, whether it be trouble in the home, financial, on the job. But you thank God. When I look back, I see Jesus. You got to see the hand of Jesus in your situation. <laughs> Sometimes he'll show you why you're in the situation. That's, that's, the, that's the hand of God. He's interceding on my behalf. And when he brings you out, he's trying to keep you in the right pathway. It's the pathway of righteousness. That's the only pathway that leads to eternal life. Because he is the Lord. He's our righteousness. He's our Jehovah shit canoe. Everything we need is in Jesus. I hope you see how blessed the shepherd. The shepherd is not concerned or impressed about organization, buildings. Not impressed. That doesn't impress God. But what gets God's attention is a sheep that he desires. Hallelujah. An intimate relationship with him. Sheep that desires and avails to be fed. From the good pastures of his word. Hallelujah. It's about the word. I said it's all about the word. And we must know that his word must have the preeminence. Not just the eminence. See things that are imminent to us are important. But preeminence means that he's the most important. <laughs> oh. See that's a place where no one else should be but God. Yes, your job is important. A relationship with the kids, right? A relationship with parents, husband, wife, important. But my relationship with Jesus, most important. He's preeminent in all things. And we have to make him preeminent, not just say he's preeminent. Because when we just make him important along with the other things, he's not special to you. Hallelujah. We just fit him in when we get a chance. Mm -mm. But 
when he's preeminent in your life. See, I'm talking about the word. See, when you know the word, you can rejoice. Hallelujah. When God is teaching and feeding about the difference between eminent and preeminence. Hallelujah. Many say he's important, but yet, hallelujah, their actions, amen, don't match up with what they say. But yeah, Lord, I thank God that he's most important to me. Everything I need is in him. He's better than a job. Because when the job is gone, my God, he's still there. <laughs> when my health is gone, Jesus is still there. The shepherd is still there. Glory to God. Kids leave the house. Thank God. I said, thank God. They be coming back. <laughs> Just like Jesus coming back, what they coming back to. <laughs> oh, like the prodigal son. The father was waiting there with his arms outstretched. Hallelujah. I thought you was dead, but I know you're alive. That's the compassion of God. And God has to work compassion in us. <laughs> but it's hard. But you got to remember when I was out there young, I was foolish too. And I thank God for a second chance. How many thank God for a second chance? <laughs> Woo! I thank God for a second chance. And God, he gave me a second chance. And he gave you a second chance. And I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Now make the most of that second chance God give you. I said make the most of it. Amen. Draw closer to God. Amen. What you're doing now is great, but do more. Amen. I said do more. Seek God more. Hallelujah. He, he's better than what you know him right now. But it's all based upon your availability. It's all based upon your effort. Right? And I thank him, saints. I mean, God is saying, he's, if there's more in me than you know. But all I want you to do is just, a, amen, seek me just a little bit more. He's a good God, eternal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your word.